Hi guys. Um, yes, I know how crazy I look today. Just go with it. Um, I didn't want to wait on this video. Um, I got some great answers from the question that we asked last time, which was, uh, why don't we talk about anxiety? And I wanted to go ahead and talk about those answers and then give you a challenge, okay? So I got an email from an, an ex-soldier, and this was interesting to me because he said that in the Army, anxiety is looked at as a hindrance or a tool, sort of. Um, he said the attitude in the Army is use it or lose it. So you can find a way to make that work for you, find a way for that anxiety, that anxious feeling to feed something else or or get rid of it. Um, and then he also said that, that a lot of people in who are former soldiers who have served in the military have a thing called survivor's guilt. And you know, I've heard of this. Uh, my dad was in the military for a little while and, and he talks about it sometimes. You know, why me, why them? Um, and it's something that when they get back over stateside, home, even if, if they wanted to talk to somebody, there's not many people except other soldiers who even understand. Even the ones that want to understand, even the people that love them, don't know what that's like and they can't relate to it. So they would rather just stuff it down and keep it to themselves than, than try to talk with people who don't, who aren't capable, they don't have any way of empathizing with it. Another comment that I got said that uh, we as a society, especially in this country, we prefer to self-medicate, that we uh, drink beer, take drugs, prescription drugs, um, you know, some of us it's food even, and we just try to make ourselves feel better in these ways that do work temporarily. They're just not permanent solutions, but we sort of have this collective feeling of whatever gets you through the day. Is fine and that way you're handling your business and I'm handling my business and we don't have to get too familiar um, another comment said that that they thought that it was fear of judgment and fear of inadequacy and I know that both of those are true especially the inadequacy that's a, a big one here again in, in America I think that we're always competing I think that the emphasis here is always on what's the biggest what's the most who's got the biggest or the most or the nicest, whose kids are performing the best. And there's a lot of pressure that comes along with that and we're always trying to keep up with that. And then the other side of that is that we don't feel like we can talk about our anxiety or our struggles at all because it makes us even less than we already feel we are. Susie Q down the street has it made and she's not anxious. So I'm not gonna say that I'm, I'm anxious um, because that'll just make me you know, even one level down from her, one level more uh, down from her. So we just don't talk about it because we already feel inadequate. So, and that made a lot of sense to me and it makes me sad and it's not true, uh, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, I had an interesting comment that, that anxiety or any kind of struggles, especially when they're mental or emotional struggles, for men in particular, they are or they can be perceived as weakness. And I hadn't thought about this and I'm so glad that somebody brought it up because I don't think that there's a, a double standard necessarily, but there is definitely a different standard with men and women. Women are allowed to be emotional. We're allowed to talk about fears. That's what women do. Um, men are less or they feel less, I don't want to say empowered, they, they feel like they can't. They feel like they can't talk about these things because it takes away from their masculinity if they, if they show any kind of weakness. So that was an interesting one and I think that it's very true and I have some experience being around men like this who are actually very sensitive, very imaginative, very creative types, but you wouldn't know it uh, and they don't show it and they don't talk about it. And unfortunately, a lot of times they don't express it and the world is missing out on what they can give because they don't feel like that's a manly thing to do. It's not a manly way to act or a way to speak. And so that's the same with, with anxiety and mental health is that a lot of men feel like if I talk about this, if anybody knows this about me, they're gonna see it as a weakness in me. They're gonna see me as less than a man. So also not true and something we'll talk about later. So thank you to everybody who sent emails and left comments on the videos. I really appreciate you. Uh, I have a challenge for you guys this week since we've talked about 
that we don't talk about anxiety and why we don't talk about anxiety. Now, here comes the fun part is that we change that and we do talk about anxiety. So the challenge I have for you this week is twofold. Number one, I want you to tell your story. And I, I can hear some of you already are saying, Janae, I, there's nobody for me to tell my story to. My family already knows. I've talked it into the dirt. I can't tell my story. But I promise you that if you become open to the possibility, if you allow yourself, if you just say, okay, I promise you, if an opportunity comes, I will tell my story. I will share my struggle with someone. Then I promise you, the minute you say you are open to that, an opportunity will present itself to you and you will have the opportunity to tell your story. And I would like for you to do that, okay? And then number two, the second part of that is to check on somebody. Super simple, it can be anyone. It can be your kids. I have a nine year old and he is in third grade and a lot of people look at kids and think, what do they have to worry about? But actually, a lot. Um, being a kid's not easy. And in third grade, they have a, a large workload and, and they're figuring things out. And he comes home with a lot on his shoulders sometimes and he internalizes a lot. So I do have to check in with him and say, is there anything you want to talk about? Are you feeling sort of, look at that hair just sticking out. <laughs> Are you feeling sort of sad about anything? Are you mad? Can I help with anything? And, and so my challenge, the second part of the challenge for this week is just to reach out to anybody, coworker, your mom, your neighbor, anybody that you see regularly and say, are you okay? How are you doing? Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Is there anything that's bothering you? Is there something great you'd like to talk about? Because, you know, it doesn't have to be negative, but you just want to make that human connection with somebody who's already in your life, but maybe you don't know each other in that way, you don't chat about deep things, go ahead and reach out to them. Okay, so your challenge this week is to tell your story, and I promise you'll have the opportunity to do that. And the second part of the challenge is to reach out to somebody. And you can do it, and I'm gonna do it, and then we'll talk about it when we meet back again, okay? Bye-bye.